Welcome to this week's America First Policy Institute Weekly Rundown, where we bring you the latest insights from our leading policy experts as they address America's most pressing challenges. Today, we begin with AFPI President Brooke Rollins, who discusses the impact of current policies on American families and the future of our nation. Brooke shared concerns on the escalating costs faced by American families and the administration's focus on foreign issues rather than domestic priorities. With the ladies of The View, um, when she was asked uh, what would she do differently than President Biden, she says, quote, not a thing that comes to mind. Your response, Brooke. Well, first of all, prayers to all of our friends um, and, and families in Florida uh, before we dive in. Yeah, listen, what happened to the New Way Forward candidate, right? I guess the New Way Forward candidate is now the not a thing different candidate. Well, what about the 20 percent increases in everyday prices? I mean, I'm the mom of four. Uh, the cost of groceries, the cost of everything has gotten so much more expensive. What about two new wars and being on the verge of World War III? What about the most significant immigration crisis in the history of America? What about a humiliating withdrawal from Afghanistan? Uh, what about a weaponized government that every day is trying to imprison political opponents? I mean, are you kidding me? Not one thing different? This is a wake-up call for all the voters in this country. Next, Chad Wolf addresses the critical issue of FEMA's resource allocations, questioning why disaster relief resources are being redirected and what this means for American communities in crisis. Security says it does not have the funds to see Americans through the hurricane season. Meanwhile, Republicans are ripping FEMA for spending $1.4 billion dollars to address the needs of illegals instead of preparing for storm relief. Former acting DHS Secretary Chad Wolf is here to react. Chad, it's great to have you on. I mean, this frustration is being felt by every American. What can you tell us about how money was raided from FEMA? Yeah, well, uh, let me start off by just saying my heart goes out to the, the folks in North Carolina, Georgia, and elsewhere impacted. Look, I think what you see from this administration and DHS specifically is that they've taken their eye off the ball and the ball being their primary mission of disaster mm -hmm. relief. Um, they have uh, instituted a new grant program over the last couple of years that give, gives away billions of dollars uh, to migrants uh, to facilitate this crisis along the border. And so as you divert FEMA resources from that, you divert them from their primary re uh, primary mission, which is this disaster relief. But for the secretary to be on his way to North Carolina to try to provide some reassurance to those impacted to say that FEMA is out of money is just it's I can't believe that that comment that he would make that comment because one, that's not what you say to disaster survivors. Two, it's not true. Uh, FEMA has got over twenty one billion dollars available to them um, right now to help folks down in North Carolina and elsewhere. And so what it feels to me is another another shift of responsibility. Mm. They're trying to shift it back to Congress when it's their responsibility, this this slow recovery. Uh, they've been behind the, the ball from day one. And I think it's a it's a, an attack to shift responsibility. Continuing on the topic of national security, Chad dives into border policies, emphasizing the need for effective policy changes over mere resource increases to truly secure the border. Add more border patrol yeah. agents, but they want to change their purpose from, from actually securing the border to just processing more migrants coming in. That's what Del Cueto is saying. Is he right? Yeah, I think that's right. Look, it's not a we don't have a resource issue along that border. We have a policy issue. And so you can throw more and more resources and hire more agents, and throw more money at it. But if you're going to just continue the, the ongoing policies of the last four years, it's going to get you nowhere. So instead, we have to actually change the policy and then allow the officers along that border to implement those changes. And you'll see a different direction along that border. The border, you know, the border bill that she points to not only gives more you know, resources, which I think is not the right approach, but it does nothing to actually fix the crisis and address the catch and release policy, the children that are being trafficked across the border, the triggering effect that sunsets after three years. There's a whole host of things that were wrong with that bill in the Senate, and it had bipartisan opposition. A lot of people talk about how it was a bipartisan bill. Just because it's bipartisan doesn't mean it's actually a good bill. Shifting to international matters, retired Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg discusses the U.S.-Israel alliance and critiques the current administration's inconsistent foreign policy approach, drawing comparisons with a more America-first focused strategy. Do we have a, a, a real close ally in 
Prime Minister Netanyahu? I think, with all due respect, the better question is, do we have an important alliance between the American people and the Israeli people? And the answer to that question is yes. General, what kind of signal does that send? John, thanks for having me. It sends a lousy signal. You know, Benjamin Netanyahu is becoming Churchillian in how he's approaching this. And I happen to agree with Adam on this. When you look what the Israelis have done, they are actually setting conditions for the potential for future peace. When you look what they've done with Hamas and Hezbollah and the Houthis and also Iran, you know, what they've done, they've kind of reset the battlefield when it comes to leadership. They've killed Hamanei, who's, you know, in Tehran. They've, they've gone after Hassan Nasrallah, who led Hezbollah since the, since the late 1990s. They've kind of neutered uh, what's happening down in Yemen with the Houthis. And then you look at Hamane, the supreme leader of Iran, and Peshkin, who's the president there. Mm -hmm. And I think they're setting the conditions. And that's the reason why I think it'd be great if they did go out to the nuclear site, if they went after Fordo or Natanz or Esfahan. And it's not what President Biden said. He said, you know, that, well, we need to do something proportional. No. You need to do something sort of like Adam said, disproportional. It's like what President Trump did with when he had went after Soleimani. We reset the battlefield. And I think if you do that, you change the conditions on the ground with people. And then you are able to bring in people that are moderate, people that are Saudis. And the Saudis will be absolutely critical to us going forward. You know, when, when you look at the crown prince mm -hmm. right now and his ability, Mohammed bin Salman, he's close to the United States. He's close to President Trump. You know, President Trump got a sword dance when he went there. President Biden got a fist bump. And Kamala Harris hasn't even been there. And I yeah. think he needs to set these personal relationships because that would, that's what the future is going to be. If you really want to have peace, then you have to start at the most senior levels, the personal level to do it. Fred Flights offers a timely perspective on FEMA's spending, underscoring the need to prioritize American disaster victims over diverting resources to non-emergency issues and the potential threats this diversion could pose to national security. Exactly right. You know, what, what really makes me mad this evening is that FEMA is running out of money to help disaster victims like hurricane victims because it spent the money on illegal migrants. Now, let's think about this. FEMA stands for Federal Emergency Management Agencies. How is housing illegal migrants an emergency? We obviously know that was, it's not why FEMA was created. It, it is violating probably numerous laws and regulations that this money was secretly spent on illegal migrants. That money is supposed to be a pot of funds in case there is a national disaster, in case there's a flood or an earthquake or some terrible thing that happens that leaves people homeless. But the money's been wasted on these illegal migrants. And as, as you said, many of them are criminals and terrorists. And the Biden administration knows that. It recently admitted to this. Closing out the rundown, Jack Brewer shares his firsthand experiences helping communities recover from natural disasters, highlighting the critical need for a proactive America First approach to disaster response and federal aid. It is offensive. It's offensive to every American that we're watching billions of dollars uh, go to folks in Lebanon and in Ukraine and um, Iran and everywhere else uh, while we see our, our neighbors literally lose everything and be and, and it be destroyed. Listen, I've been on the ground uh, for this disaster. I've been on the ground for, for numerous disasters uh, across America and, and other countries. The way that we uh, deal with natural disasters has to fundamentally change. Uh, and especially under the Biden-Harris administration, when you see uh, our, our FEMA money uh, going to uh, illegal immigrants. Uh, and then you walk to and, and you talk to these Americans. I've seen two gentlemen from FEMA walking around uh, the entire time. I've been down here in, in, in Florida, and I'm talking about, uh, um, Carrie, these, these houses took on 9, 10, 15 foot of water. They're completely destroyed. Uh, people are helpless and, and homeless, and they're just now getting trailers to try to reshape their lives and live in for the next few years uh, until they figure out how to get their houses back. And so when you have a crisis like this and you don't see the president of the United States and the vice president of the United States out front leading, bringing hope to people and actually trying to find solutions, if Congress needs to come together, let's have the president out there rallying to the American people to get it done. But you don't hear any from these people. That wraps up this week's America First Policy Institute Weekly Rundown. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you found these insights from our policy experts valuable. Let us know your thoughts and feedback in the comments section below. And don't forget to like and share this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you never miss an important update on the America First agenda. 
For more information on our policies and initiatives, visit AmericaFirstPolicy.com.